So, my first ever professional wrestling show. What? What? Hello and welcome to FTTR, I'm Ian McQuaid and this is my review of Progress Wrestling Chapter 1, 2, 8, yes, Technique, which was from the Ritz in Manchester and usually I don't really review Progress, it's something I dip my toes in every now and then, I like to watch Progress, specifically Car Noir, I love that man, but this is a special occasion because... I was there. I got to go to Progress Wrestling Show in Manchester and wow, what an absolute corker of a show it was. They delivered on near enough everything I thought. I thought this was a really good card from top to bottom and I'm just going to run you through it. I'm going to run you through everything that happened and let you know my thoughts and opinions on every match, angle, everything. So shall we just get straight into it? Starting with the opening contest, which was the Smoking Aces versus Lycos Gym. I really like Lycos Gym. I think they're really cool. They've got a really cool look. This played off some of their backstory, some of the shenanigans of them stealing the belts. There were a lot of high spots throughout this. This was a really cracking opener. With it was fast paced and there was no no give or stop to it. Anything. It was just non-stop, particularly my favourite spot, which was a tope suicida from the balcony of the Ritz onto all the security guys right next to us. It was mental. It was bloody mental and I lost my mind. It was, yeah, a really fun opening. I love these two teams so much and this really got me invested as well. Sorry, I need to mention host who opened the show Simon Miller from What Culture, because what a charming man he is. He is a really good host for these shows. He really gets you fired up. He gives you the laughs. He gives you everything, sort of the breathing room in between matches. I thought he worked really well throughout this show. And that led into match two, which was Big Guns Joe versus Scott Oberman. Two young up-and-comers of the British wrestling scene who had a very, you know, traditional match. It was a lot different to everything else that was on the card. There was no sort of blood feud in between this, but this was just two characters. Omen, who's a very broody, very broody young guy, versus Big Guns Joe, who is just Big Guns Joe. He's sort of all out. He's really cool. He's sort of like, how to describe him? He's a bit Bron Breakery in that regard. I thought this was a really strong contest. I thought it really made both guys look good to very promising up-and-comers who I wouldn't be surprised if Either man gets snatched up by NXT UK sometime soon. That says for a lot of the people on this card. And yeah, I thought it was really fun. A really solid sort of progression. Progression? Yeah. Really solid progression of the card. It was very different from the opening match. And I thought that worked well. It really sort of allowed the crowd to settle down, settle in for the ride. And that led into match three, which was Alexis Falcon versus Lana Austin, a really solid match between two, you know, very unique and very, what's that? yeah, very, very unique characters within women's wrestling. I really, really like Alexis Falcon. I think she's really great. And some of the heel work that Lana Austin was doing, terrific. Play, work in the crowd and just, yeah, she had them in the palm of her hand. And the eight worked a really fun match with Alexis Falcon picking up the win at the end, leading to a beat down from Lana Austin. It was fun. It was a really, really entertaining contest, and that built up for the final match of the, you know, the four. You had four matches, and we had a break, and then we had the three other championship matches at the end. But the last match, which was a no DQ match between Spike Trevay and Luke Jacobs. This is one of the most insane things I've ever seen, just ever live. And yeah, Spike Trevay is a terrific heel, particularly in this day and age. Everyone, everyone in that, you know, hall, let's call it a hall, was chanting, fuck the Tories, which, yeah, what else can you say? <laughs> fuck the Tories. But, 
yeah, it just made for an electric atmosphere in this. Luke Jacobs, I believe, was a hometown boy as well. It was magnificent, this match. Just plunder everywhere. They went through my chair. Mine and my girlfriend's chairs got destroyed by Spike Trevay. And he went through a table. He took a pile driver through a table from the apron, which I thought was going to be the craziest spot of the match. But no, what comes out? But a bag of thumbtacks. We got the thumbtacks out, got poured on the floor by Trevay. I thought Trevay was going to be the one going through him. Nope, what happened was, and it's going to sound a bit convoluted, but I'm going to try and say it. Luke Jacobs put a bottle of lemon juice in the mouth of Trevay and somehow got reversed while Trevay kept the lemon juice in his mouth into a sort of high angle suplex onto the thumbtacks, which sent Jacobs through him. Jacobs sat up and Spike Trevay spat the lemon juice into his back where the thumbtacks were. It was a magnificent spot and something I've never seen before. Trevay picked up the win to a chorus of boos and wow it was probably my favorite match of the night but yeah it was phenomenal an absolutely phenomenal match and when it's on the network i highly recommend you check it out then we went into the interval i got a nice hoodie it's very nice not very evil and then we got the rh world title match between jonathan gresham and chris ridgeway this was just Technical glory. Jonathan Gresham is probably the best professional wrestler on the planet right now. His transitions, his holds, everything like that just keeps the audience in the palm of his hand. And he worked a great match with Ridgeway. It went from very technical for the first 10 minutes and then it just got electric at the end when they just started slapping the heck out of each other until Gresham picked up the win, retaining the Ring of Honor Championship in what was a second best match of the night maybe I don't know these last few were quite hard to call it was great Jonathan Gresham is an absolute star and AW signed Jonathan Gresham then we got the Progress World Championship match between Dean Olmark and the champion Cara Noir this was great Cara Noir is an absolute star and Dean Olmark is really really great I really like his moveset he's way more agile than you ever would think he is, and he can do flips, kip ups, everything. And they told a really great story in this match in that they were just trying to outdo each other. They would do double downs, they would flip, reverse each other, all in perfect symmetry as they just tried to outdo one another until Car Noir picked up the win after an amazing sequence towards the end. And I think Car Noir should retain. Why should he have retained? Because, oh my god, what happened at the end? The lights go out. Who confronts Cara Noir? The NXT UK champion, Ilya Dragunov. My little nerdy wrestling mind was blown. Absolutely just imploded at the end of this. And yeah, have seen those two come face to face. The promo that Dragunov cut was just... Just cool, it was just cool. These two tell such good stories and I can't wait to see if they have another match in progress or an NXT UK for that matter because it's going to be banging either way and I can't wait to see what they do next. And that all led into the main event which was Giselle Shaw versus Rio. It's so hard, I don't know if it's, I think it's Rio, not Riho like the AEW wrestler. These two had a really good match. They were both so different. Giselle Shaw is a star, making her way to Impact, and Rio is also Rio is also a star. And they told a really good story about outdoing one another. You know, Giselle Shaw does not appreciate Rio, and Rio just you know just takes it down, just does everything she can to prove her wrong. And I thought it was a really good story to end the night even though Giselle Shaw picked up the win in the end. It was a fun contest, nice to end the night with that match. I think having the swerve of Dragunov coming out before the main event worked wonders because I was not expecting it in the slightest. So yeah, that sort of end. So yeah, overall I would give this show a four out of five. As a live wrestling experience, progress was unlike anything 
have ever experienced any time at the theatre or any time at the movies. It was just so unique and I was so happy. I was such a happy boy. And yet, I loved almost every second of it. I loved every second of it. Come on. Come on. So yeah, let me know your thoughts if you were there. If you were there, comment down below and let me know what you thought of the show. And it's streaming soon on WWE Network, so I might be there somewhere. If you see Spike Trevay go through a chair, I'm probably right next to him. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll try and reply to every single one of you. Thank you all ever so much for your support and have a nice day.